All right, we're going hot. We're going behind enemy lines right now. I got a special guest, but first I want to thank everyone. Thank all the sponsors. Head over to www.johnbartoloshow.com. Check out all the sponsors. They help make the show possible. They they fuel the uh, the war wagon. So I appreciate everyone, and I appreciate everyone taking the time. This is this is an impromptu and special guest. We're behind enemy lines in California. We have, you know, this guy went on an interesting rant, and it, and it definitely stems into everything I've been talking about and doing. We have Norris from warrior one tactical what's going on brother hey what's up brother fucking pumped to be on the show hanging and banging uh I, you know you got an interesting story now how what, what made you want to open a gun store in california how the hell does that happen uh you know it's a weird it's a it, it's weird brother so i used to i was i'm a veteran i uh, i was a cop for a while and then i worked overseas um for a couple of years for about six years protecting dignitaries and, and ambassadors while I was overseas, I was like, I need something to do. You know, I've been behind the gun for 20 years. What's better than a gun shop? Obviously, yes, California. And let me tell you, we've been in business for almost 15 years. And every year, it's a mother challenge. It's a challenge to the end with California. Yeah, it's a nightmare. I mean, so you get out of, you, you get out of service and you're kind of figuring it out. What were the gun laws like when you started and what are they like now? So when we first started, when we first started, it wasn't as aggressive as it is now. You know, it was more lax. Yeah, there was a 10-day reading period. Uh, you know, there it was, was doable. It was doable. It was doable. You could sell rifles. There was a shit, a ton of handguns on the roster. Obviously, California has a stupid roster where you can only sell these guns in California, mm. you know, which is it's ridiculous. Right. It, you know, you can't have all the cool shit. You can't have all the different stuff. So, and then every year, every year, brother, you see that roster get chopped, chopped, chopped. And here's the thing. Nobody's fighting. Right. Right. We're going to get to that. But yeah. did, did you ever think about leaving or was this something that made you stay? Yes. We've thought multiple times about opening a store in Arizona. Um, I even have a place in Arizona. Thought about leaving. You know why I didn't? Because I don't fucking quit. You know, you have to respect that attitude. And my boy, Savage Sirico, Derek over in New Jersey, he's the same way. He's like, I'm the last outpost. He thinks of himself as like, you know, he's Kevin Costner and fucking, you know, uh, <laughs> dances with wolves. And that's how he truly feels. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, you need it. I respect that. I really genuinely do. But the reality is the, the laws and everything else have gotten so crazy. So I've been getting reports from the field, and I'm a huge advocate of the FFLs because the FFLs are a lot of guys like you, hardworking homies, just trying to make you know make it come together and, and make a buck. And there's a lot of lean times in there, and people don't realize the biggest misconception is who owns these gun shops and who really takes it up the you-know-what when these laws happen and everything else. So people don't understand that. I'm trying to bring some awareness to that when these laws get passed it's it, it's you that gets it on the on the nose and people don't get that because most gun companies don't even want to sell you anything when you are uh, 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 subject to stupid California can't have anything on the gun laws and you know the, the miseducation I, I want you to get into what you're seeing come in your shop and what you went through and kind of expand on now famous rant that you went on and kind of what you've been dealing with the last three weeks you, you know, listen, you, you, before, you, you're right what you just said, but let me tell you, let me tell you, most gun shop owners ain't fucking me. That's what you better understand. They don't have this in their blood. They're either a corporation that don't care, you know what I mean? I'm not going to mention the names because they're not worth it, or they're gun shop owners who wanted to own a laundry mat or some other business. It's not in their blood. This is in our blood. This is in my blood. That's why it makes a fucking difference. But what's been happening now you have seen all these first-time gun buyers, right? right? Which is phenomenal. It's awesome. Yep. But listen, don't ask me stupid fucking questions. Don't ask me questions. If I pay you more, can I take the gun now? Where's where that coming from? You think I'm going to jeopardize my livelihood and my license for you? And, and it's not once, not twice. It's multiple times. So what do I mind answering questions? That's not a problem. That's what we're here for. But don't try to keep the system you voted against. You know, have you had that conversation with any of them one on one? And like, it, what's their reaction? They'll just nod their head. And what's happening is just now. I'm glad. I am fucking stoked that all these people are buying guns. Let me tell you why. Because they're seeing 
what the hell did we fucking pass? What the hell is going on? Like, I have a pandemic that's going on. A virus is breaking out, and I got to wait 10 days to get a gun? So, it's, it's hopefully it opens their eyes. If not, they'll be back in six months selling me their gun at 50 cents on the dollar. Well, the hope is that they don't, right? Like, you know, that's, so, that's what we're hoping. Yeah. That's that, what the, the, now that's where I want to, you know, we're getting into this early in the show, but it's, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll dive right in. The hope is that they don't, but here's what I've been saying. I had Clint Smith on the other day. And if you listen to a past couple of shows, I've been getting into this, my big debate, and I'm texting back and forth, even as we speak with Mark Olivia from, uh, from NSSF, where the fuck is the NSSF and the NRA and all this? Where they, are they? They, they, they bailed out on California a long time ago. They, the NRA, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you straight up, fuck the NRA. Let me explain to you why. They bailed out on California a long fucking time ago. Long time ago. When this shit is started. You know why? Because they fucking gave up. They gave up. Where are they, The NSSF? I don't even know who the fuck they are. The only time I do is see their flyer on the damn sheet of paper at Sancho. That's it. And then that, where are they now? Where are they now defending these people that have, have to close their fucking business? Yeah. And, and I, you know, the thing I got into with them is I said, look, I'm not here to fight because there's one thing to, to get into, you know, an unconstructive debate or whatever you want to call it. But my issue was, was this Norris. I, I said, why don't you guys have like a 1-800 number? Uh, why don't you guys have something that people can, can reach out to if they need a source ammo? I got people calling me at FFLs. I got people calling me for product cause they can't get their hands on it. I'm like, what do you guys do? Just collect dues? And yes, they get, you know, yes. they get all defensive. They say we have an online portal. And then I, I told the NRA, I said, you should be given every single new gun owner a free membership right now. Every yes, single one. Get, yep. That, that's actually a great idea. You know, who's been putting out a lot of information and I don't know if you mind giving them saying something. I'll be, I'm going to be dead honest with you. They've uh-huh. been giving out a shit ton of information and we're going to do another story on them later on on our Instagram is a uh, firearm policy coalition. Yeah. These guys, They've been plugging. They've been putting out information. They've been telling gun store owners, if you've been shot, contact us. Why isn't anybody else doing that? Where's the, why isn't the NRA doing that? It's really the NSSF should be doing it first, yeah. first because they're, yeah. they're the ones that, that you pay the dues to for SHOT Show, and they're the ones you pay into the, the shooting sports organization and – you know, that's the whole thing there. So I put a little on them. It's not just the NRA. The NRA is supposed to help with the laws. But, um, you know, my big thing is, if you're the NRA, why do we have a pop-up screen right now that has Wayne LaPierre with a letter from the press? Why don't we have something that says, free membership now, sign up, and you get a card? Why aren't we, what's going on? I, you know, bro, I, 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 I'm not politically correct. And I'm not a politician. No, go ahead. Go nuts. So, you know, you know what I mean? I, I don't fucking know. This is this is when it counts the fucking most. This is when it counts the most. That's why I put that rant out. It's like, hey, get fucking involved. Mm-hmm. Get involved. You want to protect your rights? This is your opportunity. I'm going to tell you flat out. I will go to motherfucking jail before I close. My wife even knows that. Mm-hmm. I will go to jail before I fucking close. Not because of money. Fuck the money. I've already had money. I've already made money. That's not the problem. Problem is, I care more about the Second Amendment than I do my own self. You know, it's it's just crazy. And, and you know, I was talking to Derek at Savage Zero Coat in New Jersey. He's riding around delivering ammo right now. He's like, I'll do door to doors. You know, he's just riding around doing hand deliveries like a pizza guy. And he's driving all across the state. He's loading his trunk. He's making sure people stay supplied. You know, he's become like a one-man distributor there. It's it's rare to see guys with such passion, um, you know, in the business in terms of even right now. Like some people want to cower and hide. And I agree with you. Now's the time to speak up. Now's the time to take things mainstream. Now's the time to have the conversations. Because when we get these Knicks check numbers back, they're going to be the highest numbers we've ever Ever seen they're going to be off the charts they're i, I think it's going to be between four and six million it's going to be somewhere yep. in that in that space uh, and, 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 and oh. we've been through it all we've been through it all we've been through sandy hook we've been through the obama era we've been through and san Bernardino. unfortunately had that terrorist shooting we've been through it all this is by far the worst i've ever i mean the most gun sales i've ever seen yeah, I mean, this is this is crazy. It's it's going to be absolutely off the charts. What do you think the number will be? I'm predicting between four and six million. I'm I'm there with you. I'm a hundred percent there with you. I would not be surprised if it even surpassed six million. 
I would not, especially in California. The droves numbers that we're seeing is it's off the charts. Now, how do we charts. how do we keep these gun owners? I want to ask you. You're on the street level. How do we keep them as gun owners? Some people are going to consign some stuff, and I even told my buddy, I go, you got to ha- start having some of them say that they can't come back and consign them for at least ninety days. You know what I mean? Like a ninety day buy policy. And he was like, it's not a bad idea because it's just there's too much of a quick turnaround, and then it kills you guys. But how 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 do you keep them as customers? How do you keep them make them clients? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. By what I'm ta- what I'm saying now, that's how you keep them. You get them educated. They understand. Like, oh shit, I have to wait ten days in California. Oh my gosh, I gotta take a test, or I can't buy these guns. Like online, we sell out of state. People are like, well, why can't I buy this? Because there's a roster. Here's a question to me. Why is there a roster? Well, because California made it even more difficult for manufacturers to put guns. So now they're getting frustrated. So all these first-time buyers, as their frustration builds up, now that's how you have to keep them educated so they understand, and we don't give up. Listen, people are scared, bro. People are fucking scared. I'm going to tell you right now. People are scared shitless of what's going on. Was there anyone that came in that you – how many people came in that you had to turn away completely and explain all this to? Every single person bought. We haven't turned away, not one fucking customer. The only person I turn away is the person that asked me right in front of my face, well, if I pay you more, can I take the gun now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He asked me, what me in my face? I looked at her and said, there's a fucking door. Yeah. Is, you know, have you had trouble sourcing anything, or how are your uh, distributors you know, going? We're good with our distributors. We've been in business for so long, and we have a lot of buying power. You know what I mean? So mm. all of our distributors know, give the guns to Warrior One, give the ammo to Built Warrior One. We're well over right now, I'm going to be honest with you, well over trusting Glocks, over 450 Glocks. Oh, good. Yeah, good. just I, in Glocks. So, I, no, we are. And are you see, still seeing good flow of traffic? Yeah, just even, even, oh, yeah, we have a line every morning. Every single morning we got a line. And you know what, brother? Let me tell you something. Some of the most loving, down-to-earth, fucking people I've ever met who are patient because we can only let certain people in the store because of the ordinance. You can only let 10 people in, in the store. Everybody's waiting in line three to four hours. We go through everybody. My employees have been kicking and busting ass every fucking day. Let me tell you, these customers have been so generous to us. I just got right now, I'm looking at it at a big ass pizza delivered from my customers. Just the same thing. You're probably doing more than the NRA and NSSF. Probably so, bro. Probably so. Now, you know, I tried to reach out to, to to people like that. I don't get nothing back. So you know what? I got to start the fight myself. Yeah, no. And what you're doing is, is spot on. You're rattling the cage now. Has anyone come in from the legislature, maybe local or, you know? You know, um, RPD came in in the beginning about two weeks ago. They said, hey, we're checking on you. Everything good? I'm like, yes. They have no intentions about anything. They're like, just want to make sure you guys are good. We're like, thank you. They're like, hey, call us if you guys have an issue. That's it. Any, any, anyone come in though that's like an elected official to buy and they're dem, no. obviously. No, no. If they did come in, they didn't say nothing to us. Right. You know, yeah, if they did, they didn't say nothing. It, it's crazy, Norris. It's interesting to me because the firearms industry, as you know, it's it's such a doggy dog. Like we eat our own, we kill each other. It's it's the worst. With this huge new influx of new shooters and everything else, how many people are going to be like, "Oh, you're holding the gun wrong. Oh, you're doing this wrong." All that shit's got to stop because we need this. We need the money to be pouring into the industry, and we need the resources. And now is the best time to open our arms and let everybody in. Bingo, bingo. And that was the best time. And that was the point of my rant is to basically tell, hey, you first time buyers, get your asses involved. We didn't get involved before, but now we're even stronger. That's what I love. That's yeah. what I love. Get out, and get the training. Yeah, get out, yep. get the training. I yep. had Jerry Mitchell yep. on and Clint, Clint Smith, and we were talking about that. And they, they, they said over the years, it's gotten ridiculous where it's like everybody wants to, you know, kill each other. Everybody wants to like, you know, it, it's the, the Instagram mentality. And I always say these Instagram photos and this bullshit, it's like it, it's a it, it's, you know, it. The, no one's talking. No one's doing video like you. You know, people need to do more video, more talking, things like podcasts, have a conversation. But these people can't even have a conversation. They just want to take a picture with the gun, and then everybody comments underneath like a weekend warrior. Yep, yep, yep. That, and that's exactly. So you know what? That's where it starts with the gun shops to change the fucking way. And you know what? Listen, here's the funny thing. When I did that rant, 
When I did that rant, you would think first-time gun buyers didn't come to me. I got more first-time gun buyers than I've ever had before. Oh, I loved it. And it, and it yeah. seemed so genuine. You were just genuinely frustrated after a long day at the office. You were like, you went off, and it was it was so genuine. When I saw it, I said, i got to reach out to this guy. This is amazing. And, you know, you're so, you 100% captured the entire feeling of the gun industry in, what, 90 seconds, you know, 60 seconds. You got the whole feeling across, and I think you got to keep doing those, and I think that's the way it has to be. You have to keep getting the message out there and keep telling the gun shops and the FFLs because it's you guys have the power at the end of the day. And now with the money coming in, you have the resources. So it's who you anoint, the next uh, voice, face, whatever it is of the industry, and our, whoever it is. It's like it's like my frustration, Norris. I, I've, I've been vocal about this. So you take you take the NRA and you take other entities, right? And they anoint these people as as false gods. They say this is the spokesperson for the gun industry, and they put people like Dana Loesch out there. And I said to somebody one time, I go, Dana Loesch has never cashed a paycheck in the firearms business. She's a spokesperson. She's never yeah. sold a gun over a counter. I like her. I like Dana personally. It's yeah. not an offensive thing, but she yeah. represents the FFL community. She represents the manufacturers. She's a debater. You, 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 yeah, yeah. You need people like us to represent the FFL. You know, it's the same. Listen, we did a huge story with the Wall Street Journal, and I challenged the fucking Wall Street Journal to go up Sacramento, right, and ask the people that pass the laws in California. You know they came back and told me, hey, you were right. I said, what was I right about? They go, you were right that the people passing the laws don't know shit and don't know what they're they passing. They don't. They don't know what they're passing. What I see out there is a lot of good debaters. What I see out there is a lot of good conversation guys. But at the end of the day, they there's a lot of people out there. They get into the debate of the Second Amendment, and they're really good about that. But it's not just about that. It doesn't stop no. there. It's the manufacturing. It's understanding who pushes the buttons on the machine. It's the guy yep. behind the counter. Yep. It's the, yes. the person Bingo. that has to go home and balance their QuickBooks. They, they don't yep. understand that at the ground no. level, no. what it takes to yeah. source yeah. ammunition. That's why I look around when people... I get offended when people are like oh yeah what about this one and what about that one they're in the gun industry i go no 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 no. i said they don't cash a check in the defense industry not a check they write books they write books and, and that's what i'm saying you need the guys at the ground level listen i've even opened up to sacramento i thought i've even sent letters emails called and told the politicians that sit up there listen i understand you need to have laws but let me come help. Let's get the gun owners. Let's get the employees. I've said it. I've said yeah. it. Let's come up there. Let's come up. Listen, you want to do a 10-day reading period? Fine. But let me tell you that this law doesn't work. Let mm -hmm. me tell you that this is pointless. Having a micro stamping on a firing pin, what the fuck do you need that for? What do you need that? You know why they did it? They did it to stop guns on the roster. That's why they did shit like that. Of course, it's a workaround. And what they do is yeah. they create these different things like you can't drop the mag, you can't do this. And, and eventually, someone out there, I always said this, I said, I hope somebody engineers a firearm for California that, you know, like the mag goes in on the top, you know, something. It's, it, <laughs> I hope somebody designs something really creative and it, and it just thwarts all those laws because they're all workarounds. And, you know, at the end of the day, California is becoming abortion. It's become an absolutely ridiculous um you know amalgamation well, you even what, saw the other law you saw the what senator warren said it was right mm -hmm. the hr 5717 yeah hey guess what all you politicians you freaking d-bags that are sitting up there doing nothing for anybody sitting there making millions i got a story for you how about you take all your secret service that have guns and send them home they won't they, no, won't. they won't of course not they won't and and the reality is you know, everybody says, look, I understand politics, Norris, I, and you do too. I know you do. It's a horse trade at the end of the day. We give, yep. they get. We give, they get. We get, they give. And it, that's what it is. You know, at the end of the day, I try to explain to people all the time. I'm like, okay, we may have lost bump stocks, but we won the war on pistol braces for sure. For sure. And I tell people all the time, you know, pistol braces change the whole game because now you can pretty much, you know, make a working SBR pretty easily. But what I try to explain to people all the time too is at the end of the day, there's no reason why you can't go home with a suppressor the same day or, or put a three-day waiting period on it. It's, it's a serialized product. Pay the stamp at the register, right? And then, you know, release the product. There's really no rhyme or reason. Put it on a separate list. Create a, f a separate, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, NA, N, 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 NFA list that it goes into, and that's it. You're done. It's all done at the point of sale. 
It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, maybe maybe have it be accompanied by someone who has a concealed carry permit. I don't know. Create something. But it can be done. Don't tell me it can't be done. And people always say, like, what's your solution for national, national reciprocity? It's really simple. It should be treated like a driver's license. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, dude. And, you know, listen, same thing. we got a 10-day waiting period. Why do you have people that have a CCW? If you have a CCW, you've already been vetted. You've already had a background check. You have. Why do they need to wait 10 days? Yeah, it doesn't make What's any sense. It, it makes make, it makes no sense. They, they uh, should buy and they should be able to walk out, just like law enforcement. Law enforcement can buy and walk out, but here's the thing: they got to get a letter, they got to get this for duty, they got to get why they've already been vetted, they already have their ID. Why do they need an additional letter on top? You know what I mean? It's like the shit, law after law after law, and that's what they're doing to the gun business. And listen, I'm gonna be here till the end. I'm going to be there, but I can tell you right now, 10 years from now, it's probably going to be even harder to buy a gun in California. Almost impossible. I was going to ask you, my next question was, where do you see it going in California with the legislature? 10 years, gun shops will be out of business. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm a fucking, uh, listen, I, one thing I know is I know fucking business, okay? And I've been in there for a while. And I'm going to tell you right now, the way shit's going between ammo checks, between backgrounds, between the guns that are on the roster to sell, it's going to reach to a peak and to a point where you're going to have a hard time finding gun stores to buy from. I mean, you can't ship ammo to your house anymore. You have to ship it to a store. And then California already passed another law that's going to happen in, I think, I don't know, 2023 or 2024, where you're not going to be able to get gun parts shipped to your house. You're going to have them shipped. You're going to, you're going to have to have them shipped to a store and do a background check on them. On parts? Yep. So let me tell you, less than probably within 10 years, you're going to have a hard time finding a gun store. How many have you seen close in the last two years, three years? Uh, off the top of my head, I can tell you last year, I had seven gun stores call me from all up down California to buy the um, inventory because right? yeah. they're closing. Yeah. And a lot of them just don't want to deal with it because they don't know how to change and adapt around the laws. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what happened. And it's just, they can't keep up. They're like, I can't keep up. You want to buy my inventory? Mm. And it's sad. Do you, you think I like that? Do you think I like that? When another gun store closes? No, of course I'm like, not. damn, brother, I'm sorry, man. What do you want to see happen? Like, what do you want to see? What would you love to see happen to reverse this? Bro, hands down, I'm going to tell you right now, that gives me chills down my motherfucking spine. Hands down. I want to fucking help. Get me involved. I've tried to reach out to people. Listen, I will help you with the laws that make sense. And not just me. I will get other gun store owners who actually give a shit and have it in their blood. Not because they're just doing it to make fucking money or they're doing it because it's just a hobbyist to them while they're wearing their fucking Hawaiian shirt. That's not what it's about. Get me involved with the people that give a shit. And let's make the laws that make sense because I can promise you, I promise you this. You make the laws that make sense, It'll be better for everybody, including the people that want to support the Second Amendment and they that don't want to have a gun. Listen, at the end of the day, you don't want a fucking gun? Don't buy a gun. Have an alarm on your house. Have a baseball bat in your house. I don't really give a shit if you want a gun or not. Just protect yourself and your family. Yeah. But that's the difference I want to see, brother, is just people making smart choices. These politicians are not making choices that benefit anybody here. We are on the fucking ground level. And it's in any business. They only care about putting their fucking money in their pocket. Other than that, we ain't shit to them. Yeah, it, it's, you know, my thing I've said a couple of times is I, I, I really hope, I really hope that, you know, out of this, you know, I always use the rule of a third. Let's say we get six million through and let's say three million of them are new gun buyers. I hope a million of these people realize and start to look at the Second Amendment a lot like people on the right look at pro-choice. It's a law that's in place. We, we respect it. It's there. Uh, and at the end of the day, they need to learn to respect the, the Second Amendment. That's my hope. And I think people, I, I think, I'm going to tell you right now, I think from this, people are going to wake up. And you know where they're going to wake up from? They're going to realize, holy shit, we're going through something like this and I'm scared to protect my family. Mm. I never thought I would have to do it. And they're realizing like, I need a gun. Yeah. You know, the best story I have, the best story I could tell you is I had a pastor walk in a couple of years ago. He walked into me and he said, Norris, he's looking, you know, he's looking with his son. 
I'm like, oh, you interested in buying a gun? He goes, no, no, I don't want to buy a gun. I said, well, why not? Because I don't believe in him. I said, okay. I said, listen, somebody breaks in your house at 2 o'clock in the fucking morning. What's the first thing you're going to wish you had? He goes, well, I have the Bible. I said, the Bible? I said, well, the Bible stopped the bullet. He, mm. he looked at me. Didn't say a word, bro. Didn't say a word. Turned around, came back the next day, bought two guns. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's common sense and you know i really hope that you guys mobilize because i can't i can't do it alone i hope you guys mobilize and and get the nssf the nra especially those entities and i'm getting the nssf on i've just booked the guy for tuesday uh i'm getting one of the top top guys on um you know i really hope you guys you know get on whatever we can do count us in yeah i I, reach out to them tag them get some of those stories up get some of those because they need to see it because i said to them they got on my case and they said, well, you know, I said, you think I'm just starting shit? I go, you guys need a 1-800 number, number up there that FFLs can call into a resource for them right now that they can call into. There's gun shops right now that are scared, that are trying to figure it out, that don't want to close, that don't know the laws. They don't know what's being passed. They don't even know if they can still sell stuff. I said, how do you not have that? They're like, oh, well, we put, a, uh, we put some documents up there. We put some PDFs up there. I go, what the fuck is a document or a PDF? Yeah, yeah. You should, you should be, you should be already initiating, looking at LA County, the gun stores are closed and calling them saying, Hey guys, we got your back. What can we do? Okay. Here's what we can do. We can start setting this up, doing this, reaching out. Like you said in the beginning, what's the point of the dude? Yeah. But when you go to shot show, they'll bang you over the head and say, Hey, pay into this or Hey, pay into that. And listen, I'm not criticizing them negatively. I'm giving them a solution. You still have time to fix it. Get on the horn, start to fix it now. You know, I'm not we'll saying see, bro, it, 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 it talks right now. Now is the time. That's why you saw one of my videos that I said, now is the time. Now is the time for you to reach out. Now is the time for you to fight. Now is the time for you to stand. I'm not saying to go cause riots and problems, but if you got a local gun shop that closed, you need to be started. You need to be saying something about it. You need to be reaching out. You need to be tagging, posting, going there, something. These are your rights that are getting slammed. It's your rights that are getting slammed. The, the NRA thing is an easy fix. I said it. I said every single new gun owner should be be told to go sign up and get a free membership right now. Now's the time I think to that's do that. An awesome idea. I think that's a no brainer, Norse. A no brainer. They should have shipped thousands of pamphlets or whatever to you guys but this is why i've said for a long time to the nra and the nssf you guys need to have streaming you need to have these things they're worried about doing a, a, a class on facebook advertising at shot show you need to have these these things in place for now you need to start to mobilize and get your people out there and say how can we help you sign people up now we want to give every one of your new customers a free membership and with that free membership i said this to a very high-ranking executive at nra i said why don't you offer a, a, a pistol introductory pistol class online free, a safety class? Free. Just offer it free. You know, listen, you know what? You already said it, dude. You already said the beginning. Because the people that are there are not people like us that are behind the line. They're not the ones pushing, pushing the buttons. But They're not just like how you mentioned about what's in it. They're not the ones that have ever made sales. They don't know. They don't know, oh, this is not California legal? Why? Why is that? You know, because we're the questions like, well, why isn't that gun California legal? It's only 10 rounds. You know what I mean? But you, you already said it. You already hit, you already, I mean, you nailed it. I know, but it's it's still somewhat our fault. Like, we have to step up as FFLs and as gun shop owners, and we have to stop anointing false gods. That's that's really my, you know, and I'm going to be talking to Ready yeah. Gunner. I'm going to be talking to Neil over the weekend. And, you know, it's just we need to stop. And I'm not, you know, I don't say this. I'm not knocking this person when I say this, but I, I bring up Dana and I bring up certain people like Colleen Noir. Noir. They're great people. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with them, but they're not on the front lines. They've never actually cashed a check in the firearms business. That's my criticism. That's the only no, thing I, I say. And, you know, I we agree. anoint them and we look at the, oh, wow, you know, this one or that one. Well, they're, they're not... They're not the people we should be anointing. They're not the people we should be extending the blessing to. So when people say, oh, I'm going to tune into this or I'm going to support that, it's not, it doesn't, it's not indicative of what it should be. Okay. You want to know why I don't go to shop? You don't want to know why I didn't go last year in the last two, the last two years. You want to know why? Because it's like a, it's like an Instagram celebrity shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I'm there to do business. I'm there to make orders happen. I could give two fucks about this person on Instagram, this person I'm taking pictures, look at me so I can get comments. It's like, dude, get the fuck out of my way. I got business to run. You know what I mean? I don't and even that's drink. Where I, been going. I don't even drink. 
Yeah. How do you think I feel? You know, and I live in Vegas, so it's a little, you know, but uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I just, I look at it and I say, we, we have to step up as a community and start promoting from within. We have to stop the infighting. We have to start to bless and anoint great gun shop owners like yourself, great people that are, that are getting vocal and getting out there constructively, you know, venting and getting it all out there and have these conversations and stop posting Instagram pictures. They're not doing any justice. Start to talk about it openly. Get the conversation started. Part of the reason I started the podcast was I wanted to put people on air that were pro second amendment that people didn't really think were pro second amendment that people hadn't really thought of that were kind of in the closet about it and not make it about the gun all the time, but put their voice out there and let them be heard. Because one of the most powerful things you can do is start to understand and hear somebody's story and start to wrap your head around their story. And once you start to get to know a lot of these FFL owners and a lot of these shop owners and these manufacturers and these people that are behind this movement, they start to become human. And the minute they start to become human, it gets harder to demonize them. Excellent. Dude, yeah, I mean, you did, and that's why I'm talking. I used to keep my mouth shut for a long time. I really did. You oh. know what I mean? Because I didn't want to be involved in, you know, politics and shit like that. Now I'm like, nah, it's, uh, that's it. I'm done. I'm e- not keeping every, my mouth Everybody quiet. always asks me, you know, they say, they say, why'd you end up doing this? This is my third podcast. I said, I had like a stone cold Steve Austin moment where I just said like, fuck it. I'm going to do it my way for better or worse. And if anybody sponsors yep. or supports the show, great, but I'm going to do it my way. And I've talked to a lot yep. of big money guys, supporters, people that wanted to get behind me and people wanted that want to do this. And they, you know, told me, oh yeah, we're going to get you 97 sponsors. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But we really like you to change and do this and do that. I said, fuck, fuck that. I, I'm going to do it my yeah. way. And, you yep. know, and that's just the way I, I, I accepted it. Like, like the glass broke and I just said, I'm going to do it my way for better or yeah, worse. Don't you, exactly. Exactly. And I've had, you exactly. know, I've had three, four executive jobs. I was a two time CEO in the business. I just, I felt, you know, for a long time, I said, you just got to do it your way at the end of the day. And, and I don't, you know, I don't care. I'll live in my truck and ride around if I have to, but it's got to be done the right way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No dude. And that's, and that's who we are. That's who we are. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's just like, I just feel like, dude, everything I've done in my entire life and everything I've fought for, I just feel like you guys are trying to pull it. You guys are trying to pull it. This is this is the thing I'm most passionate about is I fucking love guns, man. I love the business. I love the people that I meet. But what I love, man, is this is what this country is about. And you guys are taking it. You're slowly pulling it. You're pulling it out from underneath us. And I can't. I just can't. I would rather fault than die before I lose my fucking rights, dude. I, you know, I just can't. I can't do it, dude. It's just not me. Do you think we'll ever get national reciprocity? I don't fucking know, man. Because that's what will save California in so many ways. Because if they, just, if they can get national reciprocity, then they have to honor the, the concealed carry permits from every other state. And then that opens it up to you guys getting back in the game. I, I, you know, uh, man, I want to believe so, but the people that are in power, it ain't gonna, it's not going to change. It's not going to change. I'll even, I'll even challenge, I'll even challenge our governor. Hey, governor, I'll come up there on my own expense. Let me come up there and sit with you. And hey, what's the purpose of the laws that we pass? Somebody explain it to me. If it makes sense, I'll shut my damn mouth. But I know it ain't going to make sense. Well, you've said it all. It's it, it's 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 wild. It's going to be a wild ride coming out of this. I think it's going to continue for a while, Norris. I think we're going to have a yeah. run on on guns and ammunition through the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, I know. I, I with election year. Yep. I was on the phone with. I'm on the phone with manufacturers all day. It's going to be wild through now through the end of the year. Everybody's ramping up production and getting yep. stuff out there. I think it's it's going to be one of those things. You got to manage your inventories wisely. You got to be smart. You got to carry the right products. The SKUs you buy now or what's going to sink you later, and that's that's part of the thing I put back on even the NSSF. I'm like, these people need help. And I even talked to Sports South, Davidson's, a couple of brands. I said, you know, many uh, distributors, I said, you guys got to really coach these guys. Don't just throw anything on their shelves. Get them squared away properly. I don't think, bro, I don't think they have time. I don't think they have time. They've never done that in 15 years, brother. They're not going to do that shit now. 
but every, some of these guys need help. They're not as savvy as you, some yeah. of these gun shops. They, yeah. need, need, they need help putting the right SKUs out there and getting everything stocked up and making sure that these shops can make money and turn it over. If I read one more story about a guy saying he was closing his doors in a month, I'm going to be you know over the moon because you guys are the lifeblood of the industry. For years and years and years, I've, I've always approached it from that side. You need the FFLs. You need the, the, the shooters out there, the guys actually participating in the sport. And we got to convert some of these new gun owners into – from customers into clients and they got to have a good buying experience and they have to be uh, a part of the movement and a part of the, the, the cause and, you know, and shame on any organization, any organization out there that right now isn't offering at least for the weekend, something, a free membership, get signed up now, participate, you know, anything, a flyer, a fucking cap, any, anything, you know, keep, stop yeah. giving those shitty bags and those hats away and that crappy magazine, just give a free membership. Something. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree 100% with you, bro. You know, any of it. So I appreciate you taking time. Let everybody know where they can find you and where everybody can look you up. Hey, so Norris from Warrior One Guns and Ammo. We're in Riverside, California. We've been here. We're still going to be here. And you can look us up on Warrior One underscore tactical. And we're here, brother. Now, last question. You're going to be open through all this, fully stocked, ready to go. Uh, if there's another gun shop out there and they just uh, need advice, need help, need anything, they can reach out to? Absolutely, 100%. And that's why I posted that shit. Tell them you shouldn't close. You know, the corporate stores, let them close. Who gives a shit? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But the mom and pops, the guys in the industry like us that are bloodlining in this, you absolutely, 100% should stay open. Did you have a website? Yeah, it's warrior1gunsandammo.com. Warrior1gunsandammo.com. I'm going to put that down below for anyone that's looking to track down Norris. And ammo.com. I'm going to put that down below in the notes. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you taking the time. Okay. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I'm going to definitely make sure I have all this down in the notes. I'm going to be available to you anytime you need me. If I can do anything, don't hesitate to reach out. And, uh, you know, if you need the number of the NSSF of any big wig over there, anyone you want to talk to, I'll give it to you, brother. I'll give it to okay, you. Okay, brother. I got I you. Appreciate all right. That. I appreciate okay. you, and I'll talk soon. We'll see you, Jay. See ya. That was Norris from Warrior One Tactical, guys. Uh, he's in the thick of it. He's in the thick of it. I appreciate everyone. I appreciate the sponsors. Head over to www.johnbartoloshow.com. Make sure you click the links down below. Go check out his website. Go support him. He's out in California. He's doing God's work out there, man. It's not easy. So uh, take some time and go check out Norris's uh, uh, store. Uh, give him some support. Give him some love. Go check out his Instagram. I appreciate you guys, and I appreciate everything everyone does.